Welcome back, everybody, to the Lightroom 2 Podcast. My name is RC. Now, let's talk a little bit about one of the best new features inside of Lightroom 2. That's this feature right here in the Develop panel. It's known as the Corrective Brush, or the Adjustment Brush, keyboard shortcut K. Now, when we use this, think of it this way. In earlier versions of Lightroom, what used to happen was you used to have the option to be able to change clarity, exposure, uh, saturation across the entire image, but you didn't have the option to be able to make these changes on a localized level. So that was something that you relied on Photoshop to be able to correct for you. Not anymore. Lightroom 2 does a great job of taking care of all of this stuff right from inside itself so that you don't have to go to Photoshop all that often to be able to do this. Now, let me show you how it works. The first thing I'm going to do before I do anything is just fix this crop here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this and drag my line from my horizon, make sure it's straight, and hit the Enter key. So now this looks a little bit better. Now, earlier or before, what I would do is, you know, just grab my exposure and change it. Doesn't look very good because it does the whole image. I don't want it to do the whole image. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my adjustment brush. I click on that, and now notice that you get a variety of different things that you can do with this brush. Now, the brush has a size and a feather, and the flow, much like it does in Photoshop. So notice that as I increase the size and decrease the size, there's the section where you have the overall size of the brush. The feather area is that outer circle that's on the brush. So if I decrease the feather, see? That circle comes in and out. And then you have the option to be able to mask a specific area. So it's just a little bit more intelligent as to how it works with doing a specific setting change. Now, in this case, what I want to do is I want to work with, let's say, an exposure change. So by doing an exposure change, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the setting that I want. So in this case, let's just say that I have it at minus 1. Ah, 1 1.06 will probably do well. I could go in there and just put in a setting. Let's say just make this minus one. And now I have my brush, I have my size, and again, you can kind of change this the way you would in uh, other tools by just rolling up and down on the mouse. I have this set and I'll go ahead and I'll just paint. Now notice that I'm painting in a very specific area and I have a minus one exposure set up for this. So what it's doing is it's taking the area that I have set and it's taking that and setting it up as a minus one. So by doing that, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and brush this entire area and then I'll let it go. Once that's set, you'll notice that you have a little pin right here. Now watch this. I'm just going to click on this brush and now I'm done. What if I want to be able to see the changes that I made? I'm going to click on the brush again and you'll see the pin appears. If I hold over the pin, right, just hover, it'll show me an overlay. And that overlay is telling me this is the area that you made an adjustment to, highlighted in red. So that pin tells me that there's an effect. If I hover over it, it tells me where I made the effect. Now, I can click right on that pin and drag to the left and to the right to make any kinds of changes that I need to make. Once I let it go, you'll notice that the change has been made. So if I do it before, there's the old exposure that I had, and then I do an after, there's the new exposure that I have. So it's a great way to be able to use it, right? So you hover over the pin, it shows you the area, you can drag it here. You could also just click right on the pin and make the exposure adjustment here. Now, let's just say that I don't necessarily want an exposure, what I want is a saturation adjustment. I can click on the drop down here, and I can select something else. Let's just say clarity, for example. Now, that adjustment is on that same area. Right? If I hover the pin, you'll see that it's that. But now what I'm doing is I'm doing clarity. So what I'll do is I can drop the clarity or increase the clarity for this image. Notice as I drop the clarity, it kind of gets that more ethereal look. As I increase the clarity, what it's going to do, it's going to sharpen that section a little bit up. So it punches these clouds out. Now, once we do that, I could even make these changes so that instead of exposure clarity, it turns out to be brightness. 
Notice now, really dark. I can turn around and grab this slider and drag it over to the right. And now it takes care of that adjustment from a brightness standpoint. Some people like exposure, some people like brightness. It's all six of one, half a dozen of the other. So you have to kind of play around with it. But notice it doesn't keep the settings of the other one. So you're all you're doing here is you still have the same masked area. You're not layering on top of one another. All you're doing is you're using that same area. And instead of doing brightness, you're doing exposure. Or instead of using exposure, you're doing clarity. In the next podcast, we'll talk a little bit about some of the other settings that we have here. And we'll also talk about how to be able to take these settings and put them on top of one another by creating more points in this image. My name's RC. Thanks for watching.